My name is uh, Edward Dietl. I'm uh, Vice President of the uh, uh, Historical Preservation Association of Rancho Cucamonga. Uh, we've been active for quite a while here, and uh, the piece of property that we're looking at in the background uh, has been here for almost 100 years, and it's deteriorating quite rapidly. Uh, we would, our goal is, of course, is to either save it or, or get it in a in a uh, some kind of condition where it'd be usable by the people. The property is owned currently by the Cucamonga Valley Water District, so uh, what we'd like to do is to uh, uh, have them either donate it or uh, to the city or somebody where they could uh, uh, maybe repair the building or or uh, re restruct the building so it had some kind of a, a lasting memory for the Chinese population that used to be here. Uh, the Chinese uh, came to this country, uh, most of them came here around 1850 uh, to work on the Transcontinental Railroad. And um, uh, when the Transcontinental Railroad was finished, uh, most of the Chinese were in the San Francisco area in Northern California. So uh, uh, there was no work for them up there anymore. Uh, so a lot of them moved out. They started a colony, uh, we'll call it a colony, down here in Rancho Cucamonga. But at one point in time, um, in the maybe 1880s, there was uh, like 700 Chinese that worked at, that lived on this property right here. They had a lot of uh, wooden shacks and wooden buildings. Um, and they used to work for very cheap wages. Uh, they're very instrumental in that. They used to dig water tunnels uh, to get our water system going. They used to pick grapes and crush grapes. Uh, they did a lot of planting. It was a very um, uh, uh, hard time for those people, but they thrived on it. The buildings that they had here that they lived in were, uh, were not, they were structurally unsound. And uh, there was a fire uh, uh, in the early 1900s uh, one of the, somebody was uh, lighting a, one of their wooden stoves with gasoline and it blew up and it took down nine of the buildings. Uh, they tried to, they, the firefighters came from all over the neighborhood to try to stop it, but they couldn't. Uh, there was like three or four buildings left, but they were in even worse condition. Around 1919? Around 1919. So the uh, uh, family, uh, uh, and I have their name here with me, I think it's Anzia family, um, uh, built these uh, block structures like you see here. And there was more than one. Uh, we think there was three originally. And the structures themselves are made out of uh, clay brick or clay uh, uh, clay tiles. And they're unsupported. Uh, they're kind of just stacked. So the other buildings uh, were gone after only a few years. This is the last remaining one of, uh, and the last rem remnants of the Chinatown. Uh, well, I, would, I would certainly like to see um, it, it, the, the building itself is not going to last another 10 years uh, standing here. It's going to fall on its own. And once that happens, um, then we'll have to knock it down and tear it because it'll be a, 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 a hazard. It'll be a, a health hazard and a, a hazard for the people who try to walk through the area. So um, our, our object is, I think what we'd like to do, uh, just my opinion, is I'd like to take it down nicely and preserve some of the blocks that it's made of right now and build a, a nice pyramid or cornerstone or something on the property with a, with a, um, a brass plaque saying at one time there was a Chinatown here and maybe talk about, you know, when it was and how it was. A little, little bit of history and make the rest of it a little park, something for the residents.